Morning, 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 baby. Happy Thursday. I hope we are all well and truly lit. Yes, come on. We're back with another day in the markets. And boy, I don't know about you guys, but I'm super pumped after the boost of volatility that we had coming into play yesterday. It was a pivotal day for the markets in general, more specifically the dollar, okay? As we had US inflation data where we saw inflation remaining sticky. Now, let me just share my screen and we we'll jump straight into all the key talking points right now. Let's bring up CME. Okay, look at the dollar. Look at this huge performance that we saw on the daily there. Okay, one of the best performances that we've seen in a little while for the Dixie. Breaking through that big psychological 105 barrier. Now, before we take a look at things more technically, I just want to note over the go over the fundamentals. Now, at the moment, we're in a stage where markets are trying to decipher when are the FOMC going to be cutting rates? When are they going to be starting this cycle? And what we continue to see is that expectation of rate cuts coming being pushed back, pushed back, pushed back, pushed back, which is a massive positive for the dollar. So if we go over all the talking points right now, Yesterday, the focus was on CPI data. Now, look across the board, all those numbers higher. Poor CPI, higher than expected. Obviously, in line with the previous, main and sticky. Same with the month on month. But the year on year, the annualized figure, which is very important as well, because remember, on an annualized basis, the FOMC want to target the inflation down towards their target of around a 2% mark. This is still a chunky 3.5%, higher than expected, higher than the previous. So what does that mean? That means... Remember, the FOMC are keeping interest rates higher, okay? The reason they're keeping interest rates higher is to try and bring, cool down the economy. When we have higher interest rates, remember, borrowing costs, people's costs in general, consumers, businesses are going to remain high. So ultimately, what they want, the FOMC want to see is to see people start being reluctant to want to spend and stimulate the economy, okay? Same thing for businesses. So ultimately, keeping those costs higher should make people reluctant want to want to spend. The FOMC needs to see wages coming down, what people are getting paid to go down. Because if people are still getting paid decent money, as we saw last week, right, on Friday, let's just quickly bring it up. I'm just painting the big picture. This is very important you stay on top of this with me. We're painting the bigger picture. Look at last week, 0.3% on the average earnings, in line with expected, higher than the previous. So people are still getting paid decent wedge. Decent money to go out and spend, 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 stimulate the economy. All of this, you could have forecast yourself. You look at all the economic data points. Things remained inflationary. Okay, data remains inflationary. Okay, we were very likely, it was key. It was likely that we we're going to see those CPI figures, as we saw yesterday, remain sticky. Decent amount of jobs still being added to the economy. 300,000. We've got more jobs being open, more people coming into the workforce to, for them to be spending. Okay, we've got more people spending. What do you think is going to happen to CPI? It's going to remain hot. The economy is going to remain hot. Look, unemployment rate dropped down to 3.8%. We've got less people unemployed, more people in the workforce spending money. What do you think is going to happen to inflation? Businesses are going to keep their costs high of their products and of, the, of their services. Okay. Let's forward back a minute, go back here, yesterday. So those inflationary numbers, okay, are sticky. So if you look here with a dollar, up, look at yields. Yields are the highest level that we've seen since November, 2023, last year. Now, this downside that we saw in yields was because the FOMC were making it clear they're not gonna be hiking anymore. The hiking, all this hiking, look, this was all hiking of interest rates. Hike, 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 hike. OK, now the FMC communicates they're going to start slowing down. They're not going to be hiking anymore. Inflation was showing signs of cooling. So we saw yields, the, the rate of return that a foreign investor gets paid when they invest in the United States come down because the FMC are not going to be hiking anymore. When, when FMC are hiking or keeping rates high for longer, yields rise. When they're not, when they're cutting, yields fall. OK, do you understand? Now, remember, this is very important because the dollar follows yields. If yields are on the rise, it means foreign investors are going to get more money, more return on their investment. So how do they invest in the United States? I'm punching my hand a lot. You see, I'm pumped today, right? They invest in the United States. They need dollars. So the dollar follows suit of this, okay? The dollar follows suit. So look here, big push to the upside for the dollar, all right? So now we've cleared this big psychological 105 area because we've just gone over all those macro points, right? And I want to make something clear quickly here. 
you see all this downside okay we and we, we back then i was i was ready for this we were ready for this downside we we're talking about why we're seeing it because i just mentioned fmc indicating no more hikes inflation start showing signs slow down but the way in which markets started pricing in rate cuts for 2024 was delusional right those that have been following me for a while I said that at some point the dollar is going to regather the upside momentum because the market's being delusional about all the cuts. They were cutting, they're forecasting cuts every month of the year of 2024. Okay. But that's not the case. We were ready for this rebound. We were ready last year, late last year. And we capitalized on that. And we've seen this upside now. Look at structure. Structure is very much to the upside for the Dixie. Now stay with me. We've cleared this psychological 105 area. Now we have room to run in towards and go and challenge these highs of last year of 2023. There's room for that. You understand? Something hilarious. Look at June now. Only 17% probability that they're going to be easing cutting rates in June. It's not happening. Markets are only forecasting two cuts now. Two cuts. So this is very dollar positive. Very extremely, extremely dollar positive. Now... Just quickly, I just want to give you a brief overview, uh, obviously, on today. Before I go into that, just because it's just coming to my, my mind now, people were asking about the, the previous fundamental boot camp. Now, only if you're serious, I want you to get this. Only serious people, the people that have come on board with this, I've loved it because it's so in-depth. It's the previous boot camp. There's so much value in there. It's ridiculous. And you've seen time after time after time now, I, don't, I haven't even been posting everything because I've been busy. People are passing funded challenges. People are getting payouts because of this. Because of this is helping them up their game. And I wouldn't sit here preaching it if it wasn't. I wouldn't bother putting it, but there's a, a serious amount of value there. So if you're interested in really upping your game, there's a lot of value in there. So it's going to take you some time. It's hours. I think like 30 hours in total. So if you're serious, then get it. If you're not, don't bother. Please don't bother. Only serious people, please get that. Otherwise, if you're not and you don't have the time, don't bother. All right. So <clears throat> carrying on here today, what I want you to keep an eye out for, I'm just, just sort of going out uh, over the, the, the calendar today to keep an eye on PPI data. OK, if inflation remains sticky here. This is producers prices. What it costs the producers of the goods and services that we are consuming? What's their cost? Are these going to be rising? Most likely going to remain sticky. Unemployment claims. Keep an eye on that. But the focus is going to be on the ECB rate decision. They're not expected to cut now. They're expected to position the markets for cuts in June. OK, I want to show you something here. Now, <clears throat> with euro, I just want to go straight to the monthly a moment. All right. I'm not going to speak about all the in intraday volatility for now. Um, I just want to speak about this. We've been caught within an awful range since, uh, look, look, since, <laughs> since the commence of 2023. But I think we're nearing this breakout of this range. Now, I was calling parity for the early part of this year. Last year, I was calling that that would happen early part of this year. It's not going to happen early part of this year. Obviously, we're heading towards the middle of the year, but it's going to happen this year. We have a double top. One, two, neckline here. It's almost like an M structure. The neckline there around that psychological 105 area, which I see you're coming down towards. Okay. At some point, when we give way to this range, the lower part of this range, boy, this is going below parity. Mark my words. Okay. We're going to look back on this together. What's the date today? It's the 11th of April. This is my firm call that we'll see parity well before the end of the year of 2024 for euro dollar because we're going to see an expansion of divergence between what the ECB are doing and what the FOMC are doing. We have macro belief now and macro reasons that the FOMC are not going to be cutting anytime soon, where the ECB are going to start their rate cutting cycle in June. OK, and there'll be cuts, more cuts later on in the year, but they'll be moving faster. So we'll see an expansion of divergence between what the ECB are doing and what the FOMC are doing. So euro dollar is only going to go one way. Remember, when we're cutting rates, one currency is losing edge. OK, versus the other. If one central bank is moving faster, i.e. the ECB faster than the FOMC. All right. You see, this is value. This is value. All right. That's enough for you today. Just keep an eye on the ECB today. I think obviously they're going to uh, gear us up for a cut in June. But I think ECB will make uh, Lagarde's going to make it very clear. This isn't the start of a rate cutting cycle for now. They want to observe data. So this, I mean, euro reaction, we could see um, a little bit of euro weakness. Then euro may rally and bounce we're going to likely be caught in a range still for a little bit of time until we see the action that real action coming into play from the ecb and then they expand on that and we start seeing more rate cuts okay but i expect them to do it's be kind of a non-event somewhat right other than that 
Guys, um, I think that's it for now. Stay lit, stay blessed. Let's get it. Skr